Hello, George Romanich here. Today we are going to investigate the concept of a solid angle. What is a solid angle? Well, there are several definitions. The simplest one, and uh, perhaps not the most informative one, would be that the solid angle is a generalization of a regular angle to three dimensions. Better definition, in my opinion, is that solid angle is a quantification of a field of view from a particular reference point. An even better definition, in my not so humble opinion, is that solid angle is projection of the area of an object on a unit sphere. Let's see what I mean by that. Here I have a wooden plank. From the point of view of you, from the point of view of you, of your eyes, this is the size of the wooden plank. It gets bigger when I move it closer, it gets smaller when I move it away. The object is of the same size, but from your point of view, it has different size depending on where it is. So you see, solid angle is a quantification of the size of that object that is exposed to you from your point of view. And we can see that this solid angle or the size of this object from your point of view depends on the distance of the object to your eyes. It also depends on the orientation of the object with respect to you. You see, if I now rotate this object, you can only see this triangular shape. The object could be 10,000 kilometers in this direction behind me, you would only see this triangle. As I start to rotate the object, you get to see more and more. That's why I said that the solid angle is projection of the area of this object on a unit sphere. In your case, unit sphere is this camera in your eyes. Projection of the surface of this object right now on the unit sphere of your eyes or this camera is just this triangle. Now it's triangle and this side, but under an angle, and we will see it's related to the cosine of the angle uh, you'll see now in the video. Now you can see the full length of this object because the orientation of this surface is nicely fitting, so to speak, the unit sphere, which is again your eyes. We can also, from this simple demonstration, demonstrate that the point of view is very important. From your point of view, the solid angle subdent, uh, subtended by this surface is only triangle. But from my point of view, the solid angle is much bigger. I can see this entire side. So, to conclude here, Solid angle tells us how large something appears to be from a given, given point of view. And how large something appears to be depends on how large the object is, how far away from the reference point of view it, appear, it is, and how the object is oriented with respect to that point of view. As I said, this orientation and this orientation are completely different. When we kind of qualitatively describe what we are talking about here, I suggest you review my videos on spherical coordinate system or some other videos on YouTube or even better read some book because in this video we are going to use the concepts of, of spherical coordinate system a lot. Let us start. Imagine you have an origin, O, and from this origin you have two radial arms going out. Then this is what we call angle between these two arms. This angle 
can be what we call acute angle, like so. If the angle, let's call it alpha, is below 90 degrees, this angle can be the so-called right angle, if alpha is exactly 90 degrees. The angle can be what we call obtuse, like so. If alpha is larger than 90 degrees, but smaller than 180 degrees, consequently, the angle from this origin O can be what we call straight angle, like so, and that's when alpha is equal 180 degrees, this being alpha. And finally, we have the reflex angle when the alpha is larger than 180 degrees, but it is smaller than 360 degrees. And at the end, of course, then we have the so-called full angle. If this is the original ray, and then alpha is all the way around, so you end up with the same ray over here, alpha is 360 degrees for the so-called full angle. How do we quantify angles? Well, once again, if I have these two rays originating from O, and the length of these arms is R, then I can define this arc length, let's call it L, and the angle is equal arc, this, divided by the radius. Or, what I'm saying here, angle, if I call it alpha, is therefore equal L divided by R. How would one find infinitesimal increment of an angle? Well, if you differentiate this, d alpha ends up dL over R. Because I could increment this arc like so, and then I get this dL, and I'm getting this, if this was angle alpha, I get this increment d alpha over here. You can also see from here that as I am increasing r, I am also increasing this arc L. So it really doesn't matter, so to speak, if I indicate my angle alpha here or here or here anywhere, because as the arms are extending, this L is extending proportionally, so you have the same angle uh, for this opening of the arm rays. We can immediately see from here, of course, that the full angle is 2 pi. How do we know that? Well, if I go all the way around here, then my L is equal C, which is circumference of a circle, and we know that circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. Therefore, alpha is equal L divided by r, and that in this case is C divided by r, and that is 2 pi r divided by r, r, r cancels, and I get that the full angle is 2 pi. And 2 pi, if you want in degrees, is 360 degrees, as I just wrote here. Therefore, pi is 180 degrees, pi over 2 is 90 degrees. As you can see here, angle is really non-dimensional quantity. But to remind ourselves this is an angle, we assign unit called radian. 2 pi is equal 360 degrees which means that we would say 360 degrees is equal 2 pi radians. Or 180 degrees is uh, 
pi radians and so on. So how much is one radian therefore? Well, two pi radians is 360 degrees. So I will uh, divide this by 2 pi and therefore I will get that 1 radian is equal 360 degrees divided by 2 pi and that ends up being, if you do this division, 57.296 degrees. Lastly, in mathematics, positive angles by convention are counterclockwise and negative angles by convention would be clockwise. Okay, so how is this business related to solid angles? Well, let us again look into this case where we have two rays of the ra radial length r, but instead of this arc, we now have area. And this area is area A. So we had that regular angle alpha, look, was L over R. Now we can define solid angle, and we call it omega, where omega would be this area divided by something. Now we cannot uh, divide by r because area has units of meters square, r is meters, so we would get solid angle in the units of meters, which is not good. So we divide by r squared. And now this is nine dimensional quantity, but again, to remind ourselves, this is a representation of an angle, we call it we give it unit of radians. Now this over here is a poor derivation of the concept of solid angle. Because one could ask, okay, I get it, there is this similarity, but why not adding 2 pi over here, or pi over 2, or pi to the power of 75, or something like that? How do you convince me there is no factor over here? And I cannot necessarily convince you using this figure. So what we will do is we will derive the concept of solid angle omega using the spherical coordinate system because that's the natural coordinate system to work with when we are talking about solid angles. We have a spherical coordinate system attached to this Cartesian coordinate system with the coordinates x, y, and z, and we will take one eighth of a sphere, like so. Here we take a surface element on this sphere, like so, and the distance from the center of the sphere to this surface element, dA, is of course r. Here is the spherical elevation angle theta, and we project this onto the xy plane, so here We have that projection, and of course this, you will remember, is angle, azimuth angle phi. Therefore, this increment is d theta. I described all these previously in my other videos, and this increment over here is d phi. This surface element, dA, is clearly equal this length, times this length, and we are assuming this is a small square, and that's good assumption because these are infinitesimal distances. Well, the length of this side is clearly 
r d theta. And the length of this side is basically this. And uh, that would be this arm times this angle. But this arm, I can move it here, as you can see, like so, translate it. And then you will see that this projection of, vec of radius r, that is this, is equal r sine theta. And then times d phi gives me this arm over uh, this arc over here or I can see that dA is equal r squared times uh, sine theta d theta d phi and this is of course the surface element on a sphere but what is important is that this quantity over here is what we call differential increment of the solid angle d omega, which means that dA is equal r squared d omega. Or from here, d omega is equal dA over r squared. And as I said, the unit is ste radian. Of course, if you want solid angle not in differential form, then omega is simply a over r squared, which is what we got in the previous page using poor man's method. Now, my next goal is to convince you without any doubt that the solid angle omega is area that an object projects on the unit sphere. One more time, this is very important definition. Solid angle is area that an object projects onto the surface of a unit sphere. Let's see how we can derive that. Consider here an origin O and somewhere here I have an object that has area AR, YR, well, because we will say it is this distance, capital R, away from the origin. Now, around this origin, I will plot a sphere of a unit radius small r equals 1, unit radius. And you can see that this object over here will have a projection over here on this sphere. And let's call this projection area A1. 1 because this sphere has radius 1. From here, we can see that A1 is equal r squared times omega. But I just told you that here this sphere has radius of 1, which means that a1 is equal omega. But what is a1? Well, a1 is projection of this object onto the surface of this sphere which means this projection is solid angle. Of course, we can apply this same formula for the sphere. If I make a sphere around this object AR, then I will have that area AR is equal solid angle times this capital R squared. But that means that AR divided by a1, if I divide these, is equal r squared, which further means that a1 is equal a r divided by r squared, but a1 is omega, which means that omega is equal a r over 
capital R squared. This is telling us is if you move the same object of the surface AR twice as far away from the origin, then the projection of that object onto the unit sphere will decrease four times. If you move that object four times as far away from the center, then projection of that object onto the unit sphere will decrease 16 times, r squared. And this is, as you can see, the inverse square law. This law is very important in astrophysics as well as in the field of atmospheric radiation, climate and climatology. And I will talk more about these applications when I start playlists on these topics. But for now, it's interesting to just get some basic understanding of this. What we are saying is, is that imagine if this was Earth. If the Earth was twice further away from the Sun, we would receive four times less light than what we are receiving now. And believe it or not, we can simply demonstrate that by comparing Earth and Venus. Let's say this is the center of the Sun, and the Sun is here, and the radius of the Sun, wherever it is, we will call it 1. That's our unit sphere. Earth is somewhere here, and let's say Venus, that is closer to Sun, is somewhere here. Here we have the distance between Sun and Earth, and here we have distance between Sun and Venus. Now, distance between Sun and Earth is 150 million kilometers on average. Distance between Sun and Venus is on average 108 million kilometers. Take one square meter, so one meter, one meter. Take one square meter of an area that is perpendicular to sun rays at the location of the planet Earth, and then take that same plane of one square meter at the location of Venus. We know that the amount of solar energy that crosses this one square meter in one second is equal, what we call solar constant, is equal approximately 1,367 watts per square meter. And that's how much energy per square meter passes every second. Now we could ask ourselves, what is solar constant for Venus? The solid angle that Earth subtends on the surface of the Sun is one square meter, so this one square meter, divided by the distance between Sun and Earth squared. Well, solid angle that Venus subtends on the surface of the Sun is the same one square meter but the distance is different because that's the distance between Sun and Venus squared. Well, from here, you can easily see that the ratio of solid angle for Earth and for Venus is simply distance between Sun and Venus squared divided by the distance between Sun and Earth squared. And now if you square these large numbers and you defi uh, sorry, divide them, you will get that this is 0 0.5184. So that further means that solid angle of Venus is equal uh, solid angle of Earth divided by this number, 0 0.5184. 
But because this solar constant is basically counting how many sun's rays pass through this one square meter in one second, we see that that solar constant is therefore proportional to the solid angle, which means I can write therefore that solar constant for Venus is simply solar constant for our beautiful planet Earth divided by this number 0 0.5184. Because this is below 1, this result will be larger than SE. If you indeed calculate this value, so you divide 1367 by 0 0.5184, you will see that this solar constant for Venus is 2637 watts per square meter. Lastly, I would like to discuss what happens if our object is not nicely aligned with the surface of the sphere. Because one might say, okay, you have here origin of your sphere of interest, and uh, this is that sphere, and the radius to that sphere is, let's say, r, and all, so far the object area of the object was nicely aligned with this sphere. But what happens if I have some object like this, perhaps, and now it is not nicely aligned with the surface of this sphere? So this object has area, let's say, A. How do I treat the solid angle of this situation? Well, in this case, solid angle is the projection of this area onto the sphere. How do we find that projection? Well, we identify a surface element, dA, on this whole surface A, and we carry out a simple geometric analysis. Let me replicate this figure. So here is the sphere, here is the radius R from the origin of the sphere, and I can align myself so that I am looking into this object that has surface area A in a way that I don't see area except, uh, I don't see this area, but I, I align myself, I only see the edge of this object, so to speak. And what I'm plotting here is just this surface element that has area dA. Now notice that I can extend this ray indefinitely, and I will have a normal on this surface area dA. And here I can define this angle alpha. Here is tangent line to my sphere. And you can see that this tangent line will contain projection of this area dA onto the sphere. So this over here, I will call it dA, let's say, uh, normal. And one might say, ah, but this is really not projection. There is this small difference over here because surface of the sphere is curved and this is not curved. That is correct, but we don't care about it because these are infinitesimal distances and for these infinitesimal distances, as always, we assume that this curvature is so small that it doesn't matter. Now, from geometry, you can see that this line is normal to this line. This line is normal to this line, which means that the angle between these lines is got to be the angle between these two lines. Well, that basically means that this projection dA normal is equal dA times the cosine of this angle alpha. But I know that solid angle from previous page would be this area 
which is d uh, differential solid angle which is da normal over r squared but i just derived that da normal is cosine alpha da divided by r squared now because this angle alpha could be positive or negative depending how we measure it and we want this to be always positive we often tend to put here absolute value and of course if you want this in non-differential form then omega is equal cosine alpha a divided by r squared either of these it's the same result basically so you can see how you can find solid angle for an object that is not perfectly aligned with sphere you have to know the angle that basically measures misalignment of this object notice very beautifully when alpha equals zero cosine of zero is one and we get indeed that omega is a over r squared which makes sense and when alpha is 90 degrees that means this object is aligned with my ray r and that means there is no projection on this sphere so solid angle is zero of course if this sphere is unit sphere and that means r equals one then you will see from this equation that my object has area a that is equal omega divided by cosine alpha and this is expression that we will use in my video on uh, self diffusion of a gas finally we can use the concept of solid angle to also understand why different latitudes on our planet receive different amount of solar radiation sun is very far away so we can assume that sun's rays are parallel when they reach our beautiful planet earth here is our planet earth but remember that our planet is tilted with respect to the rotational plane around the sun so if this would be normal in respect to the rotational plane then we have this tilt angle and uh, that angle is 23.5 degrees well that means that equator is somewhere here so this particular figure that i plotted here corresponds to summer in the northern hemisphere because if this is equator then this over here is uh, north pole this over here is south pole so northern hemisphere southern hemisphere you will notice that there is this part of the earth's surface that is facing solar rays perpendicularly which means that this angle alpha is zero and the amount of radiation that this latitude receives is maximum definitely it's more than what this latitude receives over here or this latitude over here because this angle alpha is not zero for these latitudes and therefore they receive less radiation than this latitude over here if you really want to know this latitude that receives maximum radiation is called tropic of uh, cancer and what is the latitude well that's this latitude 23.5 degrees so summer solstice which is 21st june receives the maximum amount of radiation and that falls on this latitude that is 23.5 degrees because this angle over here is got to be the same as this angle over here six months later we have that angle being here as you can see and this is southern hemisphere and this latitude is again 23.5 but we would say negative because equator is zero degrees and these are negative latitudes and we call this latitude 
Tropic of Capricorn. And that receives most energy in the southern hemisphere when they have summer and consequently we have winter at that time in the northern hemisphere. I say we because I live in Canada. But the point that I want to demonstrate here is that this surface receives more radiation than this surface because this surface subtends larger solid angle with respect to sun's rays compared to these surfaces or any other surface on our planet. This was the concept of a solid angle. Extremely important concept in atmospheric sciences, particularly when we are dealing with radiation. However, I still did not start my playlist on atmospheric radiation. So for now, we will use this concept to explore the beauties of kinetic theory of gases. In the next video, we will use solid angle to explore self-diffusion of a gas. Until then, goodbye.